This video is for educational purposes only. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the channel, everyone. Here we go. That's not true, and it's definitely not really happening. Yeah, it's happening, but it's not a big deal. That thing that's happening is actually a good thing, and here's why. People freaking out about the thing that's happening are the real problem here. Make it make sense. Deli cheese in a plastic bag. Bread in a plastic bag. Almond milk in a plastic jug. Blueberries in a plastic carton. Paper towels in a plastic wrap. Peppers in plastic. Plastic bags for your produce. But they won't give you a plastic bag or a brown bag, unless if you pay for it, of course because we're saving the environment. Anybody explain that? First video is basically a formula and this applies to almost any controversial topic which gives you an idea where they are in their narrative almost giving you a clue whether a story is true or not. Second video wait till you hear about the conspiracy about recycling how much did you pay for your first house? $18,000 with 17 acres. What year? Uh, 89. 1989. When I was a kid, cars were thousands of dollars. A brand new car, like, I don't know, $5,000. I remember seeing ads. Houses, houses were probably, what, 10, 20,000 when I was a kid. A dollar used to actually be worth something. But what happened? You know what happened in 1913? Federal Reserve. Tell Look me. at a dollar bill. Federal Reserve note. Okay? okay? Who's Federal Reserve? This is their money. Right? Who are they? Are they feds? Are they part of the government? Are they a private organization? Are they run by banksters out of Europe? Look we'll back in 1913. See what happened. I'm looking too. We got that we gotta we gotta say the money. Look up Federal Reserve. It's on your dollar it's on your dollar bill. What does it mean? Who is it? Who started it? Are they are they us? Are they the US government? Or are they something else? There was no federal income tax the first 137 years America was a country. So George Washington didn't pay a federal income tax. Andrew Jackson didn't pay an income tax. Teddy Roosevelt didn't pay an income tax. No one did until Woodrow Wilson signed the 16th Amendment in 1913. Let's do some math. 1776 to 1913 is 137 years. 1813 to right now is 111 years, which means there hasn't been a federal income tax for the majority of American history. And just because they normalize something doesn't make it normal. In fact, Abraham Lincoln tried to impose a federal income tax during the Civil War, and the Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional in Pollock versus Farmers because the people behind the Boston Tea Party didn't mean for us to pay all these taxes. And yes, America had roads before 1913. This is the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge in 1881, the New York City subway in 1904, Broadway in 1903. Notice the beautiful roads. The 1904 construction of Penn Station, Grand Central Station in 1904, Fifth Avenue and Army Plaza, the piers at Wall Street, but American public schools do a great job of making sure that people don't know. You owe us taxes. How much do I owe? You get to figure that out. Can I just pay what I want? No, we know exactly how much you owe, but you have to guess the number too. But what if I guess wrong? Jail. Serious question, America. What happened to your country? When life hands you lemons, make lemonade. No. First, you roll out a multimedia campaign to convince people lemons are in incredibly scarce, which only works if you stockpile lemons, control the supply, then an immediate blitz. Lemon is the only way to say I love you, the must-have accessory for engagements or anniversaries. Roses are out, lemons are in, billboards that say she won't have sex with you unless you've got lemons. You cut the beers in on it, limited edition lemon bracelets, yellow diamonds called lemon drops. You get Apple to call their new operating system OS Lemon. Little accent over the O, you charge 40% more for organic lemons. 
50% more for conflict-free lemons. You pack the capital with lemon lobbyists. You get a Kardashian to suck a lemon wedge in a leak sex tape. Timothy Chalamet wears lemon shoes at camp. In a hashtag campaign, something isn't cool or tight or awesome. No, it's lemon. Did you see that movie? Did you go to that concert? It was F lemon. Billy Eilish, OMG, hashtag lemon. You get Dr. Oz to recommend four lemons a day and a lemon suppository supplement to get rid of toxins because there's nothing scarier than toxins. Then you patent the seeds. You write a line of genetic code that makes lemons look just a little more like tits. And you get a gene patent for the tit lemon DNA sequence. You cross-pollinate. You get those seeds circulating in the wild. And then you sue the farmers for copyright infringement when that genetic code shows up on their land. Sit back, rake in the millions, and then when you're done, and you've sold your empire for a few billion dollars then, and only then, you make some fucking lemonade. What else is actually hidden at this point? I mean, they're giving you the formula on how they operate. What if life has no meaning? Let me explain. Nihilism is the belief that we are one of many tens of billions of humans living on a planet that is one amongst many quadrillions in a universe that might not be the only one. One day we are born and one day we will die. We know not what happened in the billions of years before we were born and we will not know what will happen in the billions of years after we die. Given all of this, Nihilism states that life is therefore meaningless. Human values such as love and morality are baseless and it is impossible to know anything. All of our mistakes, actions and accomplishments will be forgotten once we die and the universe ceases to exist. Friedrich Nietzsche believed that nihilism would eventually destroy all moral, religious and metaphysical convictions and lead to the greatest crisis in human history. One of the things I've thought about for a long time is that I've been trying to figure out what gives people's lives meaning and tragedy gives life its negative meaning and nobody disputes that even if you're nihilistic you're not going to dispute the fact that tragedy gives life negative meaning so when nihilists say that life is meaningless that isn't that exactly what they mean they mean that life is suffering but there isn't anything transcendent about it that you could set against that suffering that's nihilism it's not that life is meaningless that would just be neutral it's like no one believes that, and they certainly don't act like they believe it. But what if you found out you have a different purpose? Are you enjoying the show so far? Do me a favor and click the like and subscribe button. It will really help the channel grow. Enjoy the rest of the video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.
I always believed with videos like this, if it can be faked, it may be faked. But it doesn't mean I don't like watching them. But what do you guys think? Where do you land on this one? Three ancient civilizations that disappeared without a trace. Number three, the Minoans, a brilliant civilization that thrived on the island of Crete from 3000 to 1100 BC, are known for their grand palaces, detailed and complex art and an as yet undeciphered writing system known as Linear A. However, despite their influence and power, they suddenly vanished, likely due to a combination of natural disasters and invasions. Number two, the Indus civilization, also known as the Harappan civilization, flourished from 3300 to 1300 BC in what is now Pakistan and Western India. They were advanced in many fields, including urban planning and sanitation engineering. However, their civilization declined and eventually disappeared for reasons that remain a mystery. Theories include climate change, foreign invasions, and even internal conflicts. Number one, the Olmec civilization, often referred to as the first great civilization of Central America, thrived from 1400 to 400 BC. Their most important centers were La Venta, San Lorenzo, and Tres Zapotes in Mexico. Despite their imposing stone heads and other artistic achievements, this civilization mysteriously disappeared. Deforestation, resource depletion, and social changes might be responsible, though the debate continues among researchers. See, while I love the topic about Arteria, what if, even them, they also just happen to come across the technology and structures, or the buildings? For all we know, it came from a civilization way before them. Creepiest home camera footage. In 2017, a mother in Billings, Montana woke up in the middle of the night to a notification on her phone. Her phone was sent to a baby monitor she had set up in her infant daughter's room. On this night, upon being alerted, she opened the app expecting to see her daughter awake in the crib. But instead, she saw this. A man she didn't know is seen crouched down in the room. She saw this and ran to the room to retrieve her daughter and run out the house. She didn't see anyone in the room but wasn't exactly looking. When she called the cops, they arrived and conducted a search of the home but didn't find anything. A very odd detail is that it was found that nothing but the remote to a dog shot collar was stolen from the house. Who this man is and how he got in the house is still unknown. If your child wants to go to the toilet, be very careful, because when this dad takes his daughter to the ladies' room, he's going to find a man hiding there. On seeing his father, the man will pretend to dry his hands, and when daddy tries to confront him, he won't have much to say. My, my story, this, that's the women's bathroom. And this kind of thing doesn't just happen to other people, it can happen to you too. Watch this video in which a little girl playing in front of her house is called by someone in his car who asks her if she wants a bicycle. Frightened, the little girl runs home. Once again, at a late hour of the night, a strange figure has approached the front door of a house. The woman seems to have a slight smile on her face at first, as she stares at the front door of the house in confusion. She stands there for at least two whole minutes, nervous and confused, looking back several times with a paranoid air. But what's most disturbing about this unexpected visit is the large kitchen knife in her hand. With no backstory, it's difficult to judge. Let's all be vigilant and not become too complacent, especially in terms of the safety of our kids. As parents, you're not paranoid if they're actually out to get them.
Yo, there's a recent story. These triplets found each other through the news because they were so identical. Uh. They realized we have the same genetics, but we never met. Now check this out. Their whole life was a social experiment. What they did, they had three identical triplets, right? And they took them and put them in different classes of society. They put one in a high income family, they put one in a low income family, and then one in middle class. Yeah. And they just wanted to see and test out how their lives would turn out. It was like a whole marketing, like social experiment that yeah. they were studying them without telling them as babies. <clears throat> Who turned out the best then? I think what ended up happening, the poorest one was so infuriated that yeah, he, yeah. he ended up trying to sue it or something. But really? what's what's crazy, they actually tracked it down that you might be one of the triplets of another case. There's yeah. actually a bunch of different cases of the same scenario, oh, that's but they didn't tell anybody. That'd be a crazy movie though. If that's the case, I hope my other two brothers are doing okay. You know, in Final Destination, they have that crazy scenario. All the logs fall off the truck and take out the vehicles. Whoever or whatever's got my back, thank you. Scientists once taught monkeys the concept of money and then disaster ensued. In 2005, a group of monkeys were given silver coins. It took months to teach the monkeys that these coins were a valuable means of exchange, but once they had that understanding is when the real fun began. They were given 12 coins and presented with jello cups and drapes, each costing a different price. Then scientists introduced price shocks, raising the price of one and dropping the price of the other, and the monkeys went for the better deal if they were low on cash, meaning they understood budgeting. Then gambling was introduced and monkeys were doing that. Then they figured out stealing, then something really shocking began to happen. The monkeys truly had a grasp of money and learned it wasn't just good for buying food. The scientists noticed that some male monkeys were using the coins to pay females for lovemaking. Those females would then use that money they earned to go buy food for themselves. Once scientists noticed that was happening, they did have to put an end to it because they wanted to ensure any future monkey business occurred as nature intended. All in all, they found that when money was introduced, they just behaved a good bit like humans. I tend to question the research itself, not much about the result, what the motivation is, who funded it, just see whether there was an agenda behind it. Nowadays, you can't be so sure. That's it for the video today, everyone. We'll end the video with the next clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all for showing up. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you around.